Hello everyone and welcome to Loving Tech Life. This is my 2022 desk setup tour. It's the video where I show you everything in my setup and how I use it. This is a setup I've used over the past couple of years for both working from home and gaming and is the setup I have in the background of my videos. I've put timestamps and links below to everything I show you today. So if there's something you like, you can check that out. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today and it gives you some inspiration or ideas for your own setup. But if I did miss anything, just drop your questions below and I'll try and answer them. Hi, I'm David Loving and you're watching Loving Tech Life. On this channel, I share my love of tech and gaming with tips, tutorials and reviews based on my experiences. Welcome. Quick backstory, we moved into this house during the pandemic and like many others, I was working from home. There wasn't a spare room I could use as an office, so I set my desk up temporarily in our bedroom and planned on moving it into the garage once I'd converted that into a room. With this in mind, I had to keep everything restricted to this small desk and as tidy as I can manage until I could invest in a more permanent setup later. This also meant that some parts of the setup are not ideal, but get the job done. The garage conversion was put off for a lot longer than originally planned, so I have been using this setup almost every day for the past two years. Let's start with the desk itself. It's officially not a desk, but a kitchen table from Ikea. I've been using as a desk for a number of years. It's 125 centimeters or 49 inches wide, which is on the smaller, more compact side, but it's fairly deep at 75 centimeters or 29 inches. So I can sit the monitors on the table itself without monitor arms and still have enough room for everything else. This table wouldn't be suited to monitor stands or clamps anyway, because of how the frame is so close to the edge of the table. It has a nice clean white aesthetic and a small enough size that it has fit in well to the rentals I've lived in. They don't sell this exact table in Ikea anymore, but there is a newer version of this table and it's expandable. The chair I use is a fairly standard black and chrome mesh office chair that you'll find online for about 100 Australian dollars. It's pretty basic and the adjustments you can make are limited to just moving it up and down, but it's fairly comfortable and the breathable mesh back helps my back from heating up too much. My main monitor has been one of my favorite things about this setup. It's a 32 inch Samsung C32 HG70 gaming monitor, which is a really great 2K gaming monitor for its time. I originally chose this monitor so I could use it with my last gen Xbox One X and PS4 Pro consoles and the PC for gaming. The monitor had features they all could take advantage of. Low input lag for responsive gaming experience, a standard 16 by nine aspect ratio for the consoles instead of going ultra wide for the sake of just the PC. FreeSync was supported by both the Xbox One X and PC, reducing stutter and screen tearing. HDR was supported by them all, providing a great image presentation and a high native refresh rate, meaning clear motion when gaming. Then when I changed primarily to working from home, the larger 32 inch monitor and 2K resolution was awesome for productivity. Today, I have the PS5 and Xbox Series X consoles connected. This monitor supports running them at 120 Hertz at 1440p, which is great for games like Call of Duty, where clear motion and faster response time are needed. However, this monitor is getting on a bit now and doesn't support all the newer features like my LG CX OLED TV. So it is something I would like to upgrade at some stage to make the most of the console's newer tech. I have LifeX Z strip LEDs stuck to the back of the monitor. When working, I usually have them set to a white for a nice bias lighting, which helps reduce eye strain. They provide the lighting for the backgrounds of my YouTube videos with all the bright saturated colors you would ever need. On the left, I have a vertical monitor, which I picked up when I started working from home. There's nothing particularly special about it, but I have gotten used to having a vertical monitor for productivity purposes and would recommend having one. On the right hand side, I have a metal laptop stand from Apple where I place whatever work laptop I'm using at the time. This helps raise the laptop closer to eye level and means that I effectively have a triple monitor set up for productivity. Just even having more than a single monitor for work makes a big difference. 
Below the laptop, I have a Jabra Speak 710 Bluetooth speakerphone. When I started working from home and having so many video meetings, I picked up this speakerphone so that I could have decent audio for calls and meetings. It's been great. I can hear everyone nice and loud and they can hear me clearly. In the middle, under the monitor, I have an Apple HomePod Mini. I like to have some music playing in the background while working. However, before I got the HomePod, it was a hassle constantly switching off the music or adjusting the volume each time I had to take a call on my mobile. One reason I got the HomePod Mini was so that I could answer calls from it and it would automatically pause the music. Over time, this wasn't always working well, however, as it was hit and miss answering and making calls on it. So I got out of the habit of doing this. I have to turn off the power to the HomePod every night, along with everything else on the desk. And I think this glitched out some aspects of the HomePod mini, like the call handling features. I would like to try this again in the future where I could just keep it powered on all the time. I do use the HomePod for other things too. Leave a comment below if you'd like me to make a separate video just about the HomePod mini. My keyboard is a Logitech K520R, which comes in a keyboard and mouse combo that I picked up while working at the office and later brought it home. I really like the low profile keys that provide a soft tactile feedback. The mouse that came with it is serviceable, but I much prefer my Logitech G602. This is primarily designed as a gaming mouse with many programmable buttons and profiles, but I do also love the ergonomics and weight of this mouse for productivity purposes. Like a few of the things in this setup, I got this mouse some time ago, and after many hours of use, the buttons are starting to get a bit shiny, but it's still going strong, so I'm not in a massive hurry to replace it. Under the mouse, I have a Logitech gaming mouse pad, which again, I've had for some time, and it is a good size. I have a MagSafe charger sitting on my desk in case I want to top up the phone battery. It originally came with a stand, but my iPhone Pro Max is a bit too heavy and the magnet was just not enough to keep it all together. So I've just been using the charger part on its own for now. I built my PC myself and have upgraded the graphics card a few times over the years and it's decent for gaming at 1440p, but would really struggle if I updated to a 4K monitor. I have a library of Steam games, but have recently been using Game Pass for PC a bit more. For sound, I have traditionally used headsets, so I wouldn't disturb the rest of my family, but I connected some small, cheap Logitech speakers to the PC, so I didn't always need to wear a headset. I would definitely get some better speakers if I set this up in a more permanent position. Last but not least, I have a PS5 next to my PC. I game here at my desk if the main TV is being used and it's been handy having the PC and PS5 here. I mainly use the PlayStation consoles for exclusives, which are amazing. I have this Pulse 3D headset, which takes advantage of the surround sound features of the PS5. And in recent times, I've started using it on my PC too, by plugging in the USB and it just works. Ideally, I would not have the console on the ground near my feet and would figure something else out in a more permanent setup. Being a temporary setup, I have limited how much I've invested into this, since I've always known that it would be relocated elsewhere. So there are definitely things I would do to improve it. But until now, it's fit my needs on a daily basis. Why don't you drop a nice temp setup in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my minimalist gaming setup video next. That covers the setup in my living room, including the TV and soundbar, and I'll catch you in the next one.